Welcome to a Boxing Insider Special. We're here for part two of our exclusive interview with Frank Warren. And in this part, we speak all about that iconic trilogy between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. And make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the fireworks that are coming in part three. And it was quite incredible, Tyson's third fight back, <laughs> fighting in LA to, to win back at a world title. But I want to take you back to that moment in the 12th round where it did look like Deontay Wilder had put Fury to sleep. What was your reaction at that time? What were you thinking? Well, just before it happened, we, where we were sitting, Shelley Finkel and, and all of Deontay's crew were to the left of us and we're sitting there and I'm looking at them and looking at the fight. And up until that moment, Tyson had been down earlier on in the fight, brief, brief knockdown, but he got up and he was winning the fight. He was well in front on any card. He was well in front and winning that fight. And suddenly I, can't, I, I was looking at them and their jaws were on the floor. They ended around, they knew that his hand was going to be put up. And then I looked, bang, he got caught. And, he, and the way he went down, he got caught with another two, two or three shots on the way down. And he's a big puncher. Deontay Wilder, he's a dangerous sod. I mean, any moment in the fight, he's dangerous. And bang, he was on his back. I stood up. Everybody stood up. They're all going crazy, all the Wilder people to my left. And I stood up and I thought, you know what, you got that wrong. I, I, you know, it's just like, I don't say it was careless, whatever it was, I got it wrong. I didn't think he was going to get up. I swear to God, I didn't think he was going to get up. And what happened prior to the fight, the referee came, goes to each of the boxers dressing room. And what he said to the referee, he said, if either of you go down, if you get up before the count of 10, I'm going to look at you. I'm going to say, walk to the right, two or three paces to the right or to the left. I'm going to look at you again, and then I'll decide whether you can fight on or not. That's what the referee, good referee, Jay. He's on the floor, counting, I thought, and I'm thinking, it's all over. They're running to the ring. They're, ne they're nearly up the steps, all of them, running to the ring. And he suddenly, like Robo, is it Robocop? Or whatever it is, whose eye flickered and come up, he sort of started getting up. And I thought, Jesus, he got up. I don't know how he got to his feet. Referee looks at him, whatever side he told him to walk to. He did that, come back, looked at him again, and fight on. And Tyson took the fight to him. By the end of the round, oh, sorry, I missed him very, you know, for me, another significant moment to fight. When he was down, He's doing the cutthroat thing while Deontay, he's like doing the old thing with his throat. He's, you know, like done him and sort of thing. When he got up, his jaw, well, I'll tell you what, it, it, it didn't get, didn't hit the floor, it hit his knees. He was shocked he got up. And Karen was saying it, he then took the fight to him. By the end of the round, he was on top. He had him all over the place at the end of the round. And, you know, it's brilliant. And we all run to the ring. His two brothers there, really, you know, lovely, lovely blokes, his brothers. Read out the, you know, the uh, announcer calls calls the fight. I thought he won it. Everybody there thought he won it. I know Deontay Wilder's crew thought he won it. Um, and you know, as luck, you know, ironically, it was the British judge who gave it a draw. Anyway, so um, they're going crazy. Yeah, you know, you've been robbed. I says, look, because it's pointless. You can scream and shout as much as you like. You can't change anything. You're not going to do it. A goal's a goal. You know, you're playing football, that's a goal. You know, it's a proper goal, it's a goal. No one's going to change it. It is what it is. You get sent off, you're off. And they're not going to change that result. And uh, I said, well, oh, calm down. I said, he's got a draw. Everyone knows he's won it. You know, he's, he's back. He's not lost it. And that's the way we had to look at the best situation. We went back to the dressing room. And he was like, because he was, you know, it was a bit of a shot he took in that, you know, in that, that last round. And I said to him, I said, how would you get out? I said, I, I don't know how you how you done it. You know, saying how it is. He went, I was lying there. He said, I was awake. He said, I, I weren't knocked out. He said, but I was lying there. I couldn't feel my legs. He said, if I got up, I'd have been falling all over the place, and the referee would have stopped it. He said, but I I, I wait so I could get some feeling back in my legs. Then I got up, which was about six or seven, and then did what you know we said the referee did what we said. and I thought to myself I looked at him I thought had anybody taken such a punch like that in, in the 12th round in a bloody tough tough fight you know you've been out the ring all this time had a couple of you know knock over warm ups how you got the presence of mind to do that but he did have because he's very smart I think 
a lot of people immediately wanted the rematch straight away because they felt that Fury had won. And I think Fury deserves a lot of credit for the way he carried himself yeah. after that because everybody felt he'd won and he managed to sort of calm the situation because Correct. people were very unhappy. He had those two fights in Vegas. Then we had the rematch and it was far more conclusive that time around. Well, it was. And... You know, and I felt. I mean, well, I remember we made. I said, you know, I said earlier on, we thought Tyson would win it in the second fight. I was convinced he could stop him, absolutely convinced that he could stop Deontay. And the first bell of that fight, Deontay, you know, lead up to the, fr the first fight, the press conferences, Tyson was all the time getting in his head. One minute he was really his best mate, then he turned on him, and he didn't know where he didn't know where he was coming or going. But he smelled it out in the second fight, so he started being at the press conference. He was less, you know, engaging with Tyson and so forth. And that's the story in itself, that the way their relationship changed from their first meeting in Belfast yeah. until what eventually happened at the end of the trilogy. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and you know, those press conferences, because Tyson's a smart guy. He does get, he, get, he does get, he, you know, he, he doesn't miss a trick. If he, if he can spot a little crack or a floor or any in, he's in there. He's in there. And the, and the, and the second fight, you know, we went through you know the press conference stuff and everything. And the second fight, it was just, it was, you know, it done better than I thought he'd do. I knew he'd, I knew, he, I said he'd stop him, but he went out and it was like the end of the twelfth round, the consonant consonant consonation of that into the first round. It was exactly the same. Jumps on him. Wilder caught him a couple of times because Tyson was on the front foot. He wasn't wasn't counter punching. He took he took the fight to him, and he got clipped a couple of times and took the shots. But you could see he was getting to him, and he was hurting him. And I mean, it, I mean, just he, I mean, when I say dest he destroyed him, and he knocked him down with a re with a body shot that put him across the ring. If you watch it back, it's I mean, it's amazing. And he and he just I mean, it was emphatic, and it showed yet another dimension. And you know what the clever thing was about it? What no one picked up on because he changed his trainer. How important do you think that was? Because Ben I, did a huge amount of work to to get him back in a position where he could fight yeah. again. But then Sugar Hill Stewart just took him maybe to to a different level, a different style for that second fight. Ben took him. Ben done well in the first. You know, he was lived with him. He was living with him, and he was training with him every day, helping get his weight down. He did all of that. But in a second fight, and I, and you know when they split up, I don't like splitting up winning teams. But when they split, I thought myself. I didn't say anything because I know he's a smart guy, Tyson. I said, "You sure?" He, he, I know what I'm doing, and he and everybody's like everybody was saying he's mad. Why? Why are you doing this? But he picked the right guy because it was for the style he needed, the trainer for the style of the fighter he was fighting, and he got it dead right. And that was to go out and be offensive, you know, a real old time cronk fighter, you know, get out there, jump on him, and that's what he did. He, that, and that was Tyson's move. He didn't. No one said to him, "Why don't you do this?" That was what he decided to do. For many people, it was such an emphatic victory that it was felt that that chapter was closed. Yep. Yes, there was that rematch clause for Deontay Wilder, but but talks were going on about a potential fight with, with Anthony Joshua, and at one point it almost felt like it was announced. How close were we to, to seeing that fight before eventually the arbitration ruled in Wilder's favour, and we had the third fight? For me, you know. What happened? In, what happened? All parties concerned signed something saying there'd be no discussions about anything with the press unless we all mutually agree what we're going to say. And you know, within 24 hours, um, my PR man at Matram was out saying what was what, and this is on, and and it was all getting peed off about it because there was an arbitration. They were aware of that because it was in the document that we signed between all of us saying there is an arbitration it wasn't hidden from anybody it was it was knowledge everybody knew it and what for me with these things what you don't want to do is upset the arbitrator he's the guy who's going to make the decision at the end of the day so that's why when i was being asked all the time no comment no comment and it was you know madness to be saying anything and they made that uh, and you know the terms were in terms were all agreed they were agreed financially everything was agreed but they had a contract and I wanted to negotiate with, I talk, spoke to Shelley a couple of times, said, let's try and sort this out. But anyway, it, it got the, I'm not going to get and into And that was in much. regards to a potential step aside deal for yeah, a while. Yeah, and I think we could have done it, but it got, there was too many issues going on behind the scenes. And in the end, just let, let we let it take its, well, it was let take its course. And the arbitrator was. 
no doubt about it. And if I and if I'd have been the other side, every one of those comments that were made and what Hearn kept putting out and what was being said, I'd be sending them to the arbitrator. You see what they're, they're, they're disrespecting you. They, you shouldn't be, you know, this shouldn't be happening. We've got this here. This has got to be decided. And that was where it was. And in the end, the arbitrator, I mean, he was, I think the arbitrator went too strong, but I know why he went too strong because, you know, obviously he, he was paid off with it and he did what he had to do. So the fight was on and we, we you know, for want of a better word, they had to bite the bullet and get on with it. And the fans were slightly <laughs> underwhelmed at the time because British fans did want that fight between Joshua and Fury. But that fight certainly delivered when we had it. How do you reflect now on, on the trilogy that we did see between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder? I think that uh, most trilogies, I mean, it's been, you know, the Al Ali Frazier were brilliant. Two of them were brilliant fights. One was pretty average. One of them, with Tyson, the, all the three fights, they're all different type of fights and they were all brilliant. In whatever way you want to look at, they were all brilliant fights to watch. Going into the fight, Tyson was on a hide for nothing because everybody thought he's going to walk through this after what he'd done to him in the second fight. I knew he had to do something different, and I'm thinking, what can he do any different? He can't outbox Tyson, but that first round he came out and he was throwing, he was come out very low and he was throwing those jabs to the body, and he is a dangerous sod. And at the end, of, and you know, and he caught Tyson. We all know, and he went, you know, twice in one round down but Tyson showed what he's all about dug deep and it was brilliant but it takes two fighters to make a great fight not one fight and you've got to take your hat off as well to to Deontay I mean he'd give every he was out on his feet and in my opinion that fight could have been stopped a couple of rounds earlier but he's dangerous at any time as we've seen he throws that he's, he throws punches from off, unorthodox angles and if he catches you bingo anything can happen so that was part two of our exclusive interview with Frank Warren. If you missed the first part, then click the link in the top right corner. And part three, there are fireworks ahead. So like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing.